Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video and a new episode of Android Basics, which is about URIs. URIs are a core concept in Android when it comes to identifying resources. And that is exactly what URI stands for. It stands for Unique Resource Identifier. And a resource in this case could be pretty much anything. It could be a file, it could be just a resource in our RAS folder, it could be an image, a video, something like that. And you can now think of URI like a path to a specific resource. However, since there are so many different ways to refer to a specific resource on Android and because there are just so many different resources, we have this URI data type. So it's not as easy as on Windows where we just have a clear absolute path to a specific file and we can read it like that. No, there are actually four specific types of these URIs, of these identifiers, which I will cover in this video and mention in which cases you should use which type of URI. And I especially very often see people treat all different types of URIs the same and then wonder why their app is not behaving as they expect. And I kind of think that is because of a design mistake in the, in the Android URI class, because if we take a look here in our code, we can simply create a URI with URI, um, this android.anat.uri.parse, and then that is nothing else than just a string. And this URI class, just combines all different types of URI, so all four types that I will cover here, but it does not really reveal that this is now URI type 1 or URI type 2. And that is why I think many people use this wrong. But let's try to simplify this a bit and go through the different types of URIs. And the first type of URI I want to talk about are so-called resource URIs. A resource URI is nothing else than something that points to a specific resource of our Android app. And with resource, I really mean something in our RAS folder. So if we take a look here in Drawable, I included a little Kermit picture and we now want to create a URI that refers to that Kermit picture so we can read it as a normal byte array in our code. And to construct this resource URI, we first of all want to have android.resource. That tells the URI, hey, this is actually an Android resource URI. That is uh, the so-called scheme. So it's just like HTTPS, HTTP. Um, so that the first part of the URI just identifies what kind of URI that is. And then followed by a colon and a double slash, we want to append our package name. So um, this is actually our package name. So this identifies from which specific app we want to have this resource. So we want to refer to this resource since that's our own app. We simply re uh, use our own package name. And then we specify what kind of resource that is. In our case, that is just a drawable, but you could refer to other specific um, folders as well. And then we just specify the name, in our case, Kermit, so the file name. And now we have an identifier that points to our Kermit file. And how do we now read that in as a byte array? Well, we can just say, well, Kermit bytes. And for that, we use something called content resolver, which I think we used before in this Android Basics playlist. That's just something that we use to resolve content, such as this uh, image in this case. And we say we want to open an input stream that takes in our URI. And then we call that use to actually use this input stream and do something with that. We now get a reference to this input stream here. So we can simply say it.readbytes, which will read in um, the content of what we actually have at that URI. So the actual file, it will read that in as a byte array. And if we take a look here in our comment bytes, we now have a byte array. And then we could do something with that byte array in our code, of course, but I will just print on the size of that image file now. So we can say Kermit size is Kermit bytes dot size. And make a null check here in case um, the content resolver can find the Ziri. And just to show you that this works, let's launch this on my device. Take a look at Logcat and see if this really prints something meaningful. And you can see Kermit size and it seems to be 200. 73 kilobytes large. Okay, cool. Let's come to the next type of URI and those are so-called file URIs. And those are the type of URIs that come the closest to what we know from normal file paths on Windows, on macOS, to identify a specific file. Over an Android, every single app lives in kind of its own sandbox, in its own isolated environment where it can access its private files. So if your app saves some kind of files in its internal storage, then this is really exclusive to your app and no other app can access the files of your app. However, there's also the external storage in Android, which is kind of the shared storage. Um, so there you would save something like photos, videos, um, audio files, these kinds of things where many apps can access that shared storage. However, that on the other hand requires special permission, which you need to request in your um, app, which is called write external storage. We won't be covering that in this video. This is also not really what this video is about, but it's just important to understand that each app has its own internal storage, which is private to your app and only your app can read that. 
Why that is important, I will get to in a moment when we create our very, our very first file URI. So we can construct a normal file like this, well, file is equal to a new file um, from Java.io. And we can then construct that on the one hand with a parent, so under which path we want to save that file. If we want to refer to Android's internal storage, so our own sandbox storage, we refer to file directory. Um, we have access to that wherever we have access to a context. We're in an activity, so that's fine. And then we can specify a child, which is our actual file name, for example, kermit.jpg. So let's say we now want to take these bytes that we read from the resource, and we now want to save that, save a copy of that image in our uh, internal storage of this app. So now we've created that file, but it does not have any content yet. So let's change that. For that, we can say uh, file output stream, so just an output stream that is used for a file. We pass in the file where we want to write some bytes to, and we say dot use. This time we get an output stream and we say we want to use this output stream and write a byte array into that file, which is our current byte in this case. And if we create that file, then let's just print the file dot to Yuri. And that is our file Yuri. If we now launch this, then this will hopefully make a little bit more sense. Take a look here. That is our file Yuri. So this time it starts with file, not with android.resource because this is, yeah, just a file URI. And a file URI now reveals the path, so the actual file path on the file system where this file is saved. However, it's not as easy as on Windows or Mac OS, as I mentioned, because you can simply take this file URI and share it with other apps because of the, the reason I mentioned. Your app has its own internal private storage, and just because you have a URI that points to a specific file does not mean that any app that has this file path has permission to read it. And yes, of course, there are also permission systems on Windows and macOS, but on Android, it's, it's really a little bit different. Since the file URI doesn't necessarily need to point to internal storage, it could also point to external storage. Um, so the shared storage, which you could share, but then again, your app needs permission, which you need to request from the user that it is allowed to access that external storage section. And what will just happen if your app shares such a file URI with another app and the other app does not have permission to read that file, then it will throw a file URI exposed exception. So all I'm really trying to, to say here is if you have a file URI, so something that points to a file on the file system, no matter if internal storage or external storage, in most cases, you don't want to share that URI with other apps because it's very likely they can't read it. Um, so these are rather just identifiers for your own app. So if you just want to pass around the path to a specific file inside of your app, then a file URI is appropriate if you actually have that resource as a file like we have here. But what actually if you want to share a specific piece of content with another app? So let's say we would have the specific file and we want to grant a specific other app permission to read it. That is where the next type of URIs comes into play, the so-called content URIs. Did you ever wonder why if your app opens the gallery app and then the user picks an image which you can display directly in your app, did you ever wonder why your app does not need permission to read the external storage because that photo that the user picked is in the end saved in external storage? And the reason your app does not need to request these permissions is how content URIs work. So what will happen here is something I will show you in a simple example. If we go inside of our URIs theme here, we want to create a so-called activity result launcher. So we just want to launch a different activity and get a result out of that. In this case, we want to launch the gallery activity and the result is just the URI pointing to that image the user picked. So in here, we can say pick image is equal to remember launcher for activity result. The contract just identifies what we want to do. So in this case, activity result contracts dot get content. So we just want to get specific piece of content. Uh, we can then specify what kind of content we want later. And on result is the callback when the user picked the result. And you can see this gives us a URI. And in this case, that is a content URI. So we can name this content URI. And let's just print this for now. That we really got a content URI. Um, let's do it without this. Um, just content URI. Let's also put in a button here where we want to execute this result launcher to really open the gallery app. Here we can say pick image and we need to uh, pick image at launch actually and we need to pass an input which is the mind type of uh, the type of files we want to open here. In our case we just want to get images so we say image slash asterisk. So any type of image. We then have a text here to pick image 
And let's just launch this for now on my device. Um, you can see this here, but you just need to trust me that this will really show up. I will pick an image and then you will see, boom, here we now have our different URI. This time it's not a file URI, but a content URI. So what really happened here is the gallery app that was open after the button click on our device has permission to read the device external storage. So it kind of owns these files. So these images on our phone, for example. And if we now pick an image, what the gallery app will do, it will create the file and convert it to this content URI, which can now be used to grant temporary permission to read this file to other apps, in this case, to our app here. So if our app has this URI that was returned here, our app can read that image file from that. But if another app would just get this URI, would just copy paste it there, it would not have permission to read it because the gallery app did not grant it. So those types of URIs are really used if you want to share specific content and specific resources with other apps. And just in case you're curious how we can now read that in as a byte array again, you just use the same method we used here, content resolver, and this time you just don't pass a resource URI, but our content URI from down here. And what I mentioned at the start that uh, many people actually misunderstand URIs and therefore have misbehaving apps. The issue I see with most people uh, is that there is a misunderstanding of what URIs really represent. Um, because you could now go ahead and save this content URI persistently on your device, but it's not guaranteed that your app will actually keep these permissions to access the content at that specific URI. So these URIs are not to be seen strictly as a file path, which you can always use to find the, the final file to read it in. That in the end only works with resource URIs and file URIs, at least if the file is saved in your um, personal space of your app, so in the internal storage. But for content URIs, that is not guaranteed. Also, if you actually save the path to an image um, and you just save the content URI and the, the image gets deleted in the gallery, then the content URI points to nothing because the file does not exist anymore. So if you really want to keep a picked image in your app that should stay there even if the user deletes the photo from their gallery, then you need to take this content URI, read it in as a bytes array and save that bytes array as a copy in your um, internal storage of the app with such a file output stream. Because then you took the contents of that content URI and created a, a copy that is in your safe controlled environment of your app. But as I mentioned, there are four types of URIs and we talked about three. There's also the last type, which is not used that frequently, which are called data URIs. Um, so in that case, we could create that here. Data URI is equal to URI, oops, URI.parse. And it would look something like this. Um, so it starts with data, uh, then encodes the specific type of data we have here, in this case, just plain text. It has a char set. And then finally, it encodes the content of that URI. So a data URI is nothing else than a URI that already contains the actual content it encodes inside the URI itself. It's also often encoded as a base64 string. In this case, it's just plain text, as we see here. But for example, if you have a uh, base64 encoded image and you want to include that in your code, you could also do that with such a data URI. But I would probably recommend you to put it in your drawable folder um, and read that in in your app with such a resource URI. So I hope this clarified the concept of URIs a little bit on Android and especially all the different types of URIs we have. And you learned why you shouldn't just blindly save these URIs on your file system them, but rather only do that if you really understand what you're doing. In the next video, we will dive a little bit deeper into these content URIs and talk about so-called content providers. So if that's something you didn't know about Android yet, then definitely don't miss that next video. And if you enjoyed this video and you have not subscribed to my channel yet, then definitely do that now because then you won't miss any future videos like these. So thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.